Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Today's first topic, which we're going to get stuck right into, is none other than Zen 3 Threadpapa, otherwise known as Chagall. Now, I'm sure you guys are very much aware that Threadpapa has been mysteriously absent from the Zen 3 lineup since, well, day dot, the day it was announced. But today we have some leaks for Chagall WS, which is the workstation variant of Zen 3 Threadripper, otherwise known as Threadripper Pro. By the way, take a shot for every time I say Threadripper, and yes, that one counts. Anyway, we have some specifications and a benchmark which is leaked for Threadripper Pro today. And we're going to kick off with the benchmark. And this is a Geekbench result which has been discovered. And... We can see from this that this was tested on an AMD CloudRipper CGL. CGL, naturally, stands for Chagall. And again, this is a workstation SKU. You can see it listed there, Threadripper Pro 5975WX. And there's a few things that we can glean from this. This particular SKU has 32 cores, 64 threads, and a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. As for the boost frequency, well, as you can see, it boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz. But we also have some scores as well for you here, as well as the specifications which we've learned from this. On Geekbench 5, we see it scoring 1686 for the single core and 27603 for the multi core. And then, as for the CPU benchmark scores, we see 1258 for the single core. 22,366 for the multi-core. But to put these results in some sort of context, just focusing on the Geekbench 5 results, for the single core score, we see a 34% higher result and 23% higher result in the multi-core tests than the currently offered Threadpaper 3970X with 32 cores. Now obviously this is just one test, but that's still a pretty impressive gain. For those of you wondering, well, okay, what SKUs are we actually going to see for this? Are we going to see the same sort of core layout that we saw with the previous Threadrippers? And we have Andreas Schilling to thank for this particular leak on this today. And he was sourcing computerbase.de. And according to them, there's going to be five Threadripper, excuse me, Pro 5000 series SKUs, the 5995 WX 64 cores, 5975 WX 32 cores, 59 965 WX 24 cores, 5955 WX 16 cores, and finally the 5945 WX 12 core. But I'm sure there's a big question mark hanging over all of your guys' heads. What about the non-pro? Are we ever just going to see a HEDT Threadripper Zen 3 SKU? And well, if Executable Fix has the right of it, the answer to that, unfortunately, is no. As he simply tweeted, nice Chagall WS, unfortunately it looks like Chagall HEDT is cancelled. For those of you wondering why this is, obviously this would just be a guess on my part, we haven't been hearing any information on this, but it's probably just due to the supply issues, is my guess. But again, this is just a rumour, they could very much be incorrect, but hopefully we at least see the Threadripper Pro release and these early benchmark tests do seem promising. But we're going to move on from AMD to their arch nemesis Intel as we have some pricing leaks for Alder Lake. I know the official innovation event from Intel is coming up in just a few days, the day after my birthday instantly enough, October 27th. But we have a leak on several SKUs pricing thanks to Micro Center which is a very well known retailer over in the US. So obviously, subject to change, rumours, pinch of salt TM, yada yada yada, you get the drill. But according to these results, the 12900K, which is obviously the flagship Alder Lake processor, is going to cost a princely sum of $669, nice and 99 cents. As for the lower down SKUs, we also have the 12700K being listed here at $469.99 as well. And just to put this in some sort of context in comparison to the 11th generation Rocket Lake processors, the 12900K is about 130 bucks more expensive than the 11900K, whereas the 12700K is again about $170 uh, more expensive over the 11700K. We also have some specifications listed here as well. We see 3.2 gigahertz with a boost of 5.2 being listed for the 12900K and for the 12700 we see 3.6 as the base and a nice round number of 5GHz for the boost frequency. 
So the question is, what do I think about these leaked prices? Well, there's a few things that we need to consider before I even give my opinion. And the main thing is that, obviously, these are not official prices. As I already said, we are going to be seeing Intel officially unveil the specs, prices and whatnot for Old Lake at their innovation event in just a few days. So with that in mind, assuming these are correct, we also need to keep in mind that for older leg, there's things like DDDR5 to consider, as well as a brand new motherboard. But just to focus on the processors just for a moment, while these prices are not great, they're also not terrible, insert Chernobyl meme here. Considering that some previous leaks were saying that the 1200K could be as much as $700, these prices, again, not great, but not terrible either. But I think, to be honest, the real sort of make or break moment for Old Lake is actually going to be the lower down the SKUs. You know, a lot of people are not going to want to spend 700 bucks or however much it ends up being on a 12900K or even 469, assuming that's accurate, on a 12700K. A lot of people are going to be getting, you know, the 12400 or, or what have you. So I think the real thing is going to be how much those lower end SKUs cost, but for these leaks, it's not bad. One last quick thing for Intel before I move on to our final topic. Uh, Intel did do their financials for this quarter. And I don't really want to discuss that because it's very resident sleeper. But there is one thing that I want to focus on from it where they reconfirmed that, yes, we will be seeing Intel XE Alchemist or Intel Arc Alchemist, depending on which one you prefer, will still be coming in Q1. Now, obviously, this is the time period they gave us from the start, but they are reaffirming it today as part of their financial disclosures, so they are still on target for that, and they're staying close to this date as possible. Obviously, we don't have a more specific release date. They're probably waiting for, you know, Old Lake to have some room to breathe and spread its wings before they start talking about Alchemist in earnest. There is one very important thing to keep in mind, however, when it comes to what Intel has said. Although they did say that the first generation discrete graphics XE HPG architecture will be on shelves in Q1, it's still not clear if they mean mobile or desktop. And yes, you could say it's discrete, it's discrete, but you could still argue that it's a discrete chip on the laptop. So, so the language is obviously very murky and unclear as to which one they mean here, and they obviously weren't very specific, but they did confirm that some form of Alchemist is coming Q1 2022. You may have seen my article yesterday talking about GTA, the trilogy, the definitive, definitive edition, excuse me, or GTA, the remaster collection, just for my sanity, where I said that we would be seeing a trailer dropping soon, TM, and that we would see a November release date for the trilogy remaster, and of course now those things have both been confirmed. The trailer did indeed release today, and they confirmed their November release date, as well as a couple of other things like the uh, remaster controls and so on. Those weren't are an exclusive for us, but the release of the trailer and the November release date were exclusive yesterday. And I'm very pleased to see that, yep, we were right on the money with the GTA, the trilogy, which is GTA 3, Vice City and San Andreas. Personally, I'm going to be getting it when it gets a little cheaper. £55 is a bit too rich for my blood, um, considering how old these games are. But San Andreas was the last GTA game I really genuinely enjoyed. And GTA 3 always used to be my favourite back in the day. Obviously, there's very much nostalgia glasses talking, but I'm excited to play them again. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Anyway... That's me done. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.